All right, so today we're going to be proving that the circumference of a circle, the area around a circle, or the length of the line that surrounds a circle, is indeed equal to 2 pi times its radius. So the first way I'm going to do this is through a non-calculus-based proof, and the second way is through a calculus-based proof. So for the non-calculus way, we're going to use the formula for arc length. So any arc length s is equal to theta r, where theta is the degree as the radi amount of angle so the radians of the angle of the arc so if we have this angle this will be theta in radians and if you do theta times r that will be the length of this arc right here so using this formula since we're doing a circle we know that to go all the way around the circle so the arc length all around all the way around the circle we have to go through 2 pi radians because that's how many radians in our, are in a circle so simply by substituting 2 pi, we get s equals 2 pi r. And s, in this case, is just going to be the circumference. Now for the calculus-based proof, we know that the equation for any arbitrary circle is x squared plus y squared equals r squared for any radius r of the circle. Now from here, we can use implicit differenti differentiation. So we can say that 2x plus 2y dy dx equals 0 because r squared is just a constant. So this is going to be 0. Now by solving for dy dx, we get the 2y dy dx equals negative 2x. And dy dx equals negative 2x over 2y or just negative x over y. So this gives us the slope of a circle at any point. If you plug in the coordinates of the point, you'll get the slope of the circle. Now that we know what dy dx is, we can use the formula for arc length, the calculus formula for arc length, which is the integral from a to b of the square root of 1 plus f prime of x squared. And we now know what this f prime of x is. The derivative is just going to be negative x over y because that's what dy dx is. So if we substitute this dy dx into the arc length formula, we can find that that length all the way around the circle. So imagine we have this circle here. So we said that the radius is r. So this is going to be r comma 0. And this is going to be negative r comma 0. So the arc length of the entire circle is going to be the integral from negative r to r, so the arc length formula from negative r to r, times 2, because we have this from negative r to r, and we also have this from negative r to r, which are the same arc length. So we can say the circumference of the circle is going to be 2 times the integral from negative r to r, of, if we look at our arc length formula, it's the square root of 1 plus f prime of x, which in this case is dy dx. So that's going to be negative x over y squared. Now, dx. So now we can evaluate this integral. So we have 2 times the integral from negative r to r of the square root of 1 plus, if we square this negative x over y, we're going to get x squared over y squared dx. Now we know that we're different, we're integrating with respect to x. So I want to get rid of this y. I don't need this y in here. So if we go back to our original uh, formula for a circle and we solve for y, we get that y is going to be the square root of r squared minus x squared, the plus or minus square root, because we're counting the top and bottom halves of the circle. So if we substitute that into this equation right here, we get 2 times the integral from negative r to r, the square root of 1 plus x squared over y squared. So y is the square root of r squared minus x squared. So y squared is just going to be r squared minus x squared. So just the whatever's inside the radical. So this denominator is going to turn into r squared minus x squared.
and dx. Now, we have this integral we need to evaluate. So to do this, uh, the first thing we're going to do is combine these two. So to get a common denominator, we can change this 1 so that we get 2 times the integral from negative r to r of the square root of this 1. To get a common denominator, we can make this r squared minus x squared over r squared minus x squared. And then we still have this second fraction, dx. Now combining the two fractions, we get that this is 2 times the integral from negative r to r of, combining the two, we get r squared minus x squared plus x squared over r squared minus x squared dx. Notice this negative x squared and this positive x squared are going to cancel. So we're just going to have 2 times the integral from negative r to r of the square root of r squared over r squared minus x squared. Now, for those of you that have learned integrals resulting in inverse trig functions, this may look familiar. So just a little bit of background. We know that the integral of du over the square root of a squared minus u squared is going to equal to arc sine of u over a plus c. So in this case, we can actually square root the top and the bottom to morph this integral into this form so that we can get an arc sine out of it. So if we do that, we get 2 times the integral from negative r to r of r over the square root of r squared minus x squared dx. We can take out this r, so we get 2r times the integral from negative r to r of dx over the square root of r squared minus x squared. Now notice, this basically matches here except instead of uh, a squared, we have r squared, which is still just a constant. And instead of u, we have x. So this is going to give us 2r times arc sine x over r. And since it's a definite integral, we're going to evaluate from negative r to r. Now, we have 2r times if we evaluate this at r, we get arc sine of r over r minus, and then we're going to evaluate arc sine x over r at negative r. So arc sine negative r over r. Then we get 2r arc sine 1, because r over r is 1, minus arc sine negative 1. Now, if we Think back to our unit circle. Uh, the arc sine of 1 is going to be the angle where the sine of that angle is equal to 1. And it's, the angle has to be between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So in this case, this arc sine of 1 is just going to turn into pi over 2 because sine of pi over 2 is 1. And arc sine of negative 1 is going to turn into negative pi over 2 because uh, sine of negative pi over 2 is negative 1. So substituting this back in, we get that we have 2r times pi over 2. Since we have minus negative pi over 2, we're just going to add another pi over 2. So this is going to equal 2r times pi, or in other words, 2 pi r. And this is the circumference of a circle. So we've just proven using calculus and the arc length formula that the circumference of a circle is indeed 2 pi times its radius. And we're done.